we're just going to talk all things zombies. And... Zambies. Zambies. Brains. Brains. That pink, delicious, jelly-like goo. That humans forget to use. Implying that humans still have them. Uh, no, they have them. They just don't work most of the time, I think. Fair enough. So, yeah, but, fair, but to be fair, the, the zombies go after those ones first. I'm, I'm, I take it you haven't seen the old Simpsons House of Horrors episode if that involves zombies, have you? No, but the, the brains are actually... filled with air. To them, they're eating a Cheetos puff. It's well, mostly air and kind of full of flavor. No. Here is one of the best jokes because. Because Homer leaves himself behind to be sacrificed, the zombies check his head and they just leave him. All still looking for, for brains. That's See, one of my more fast favorite zombie skits involves the German Ventures of Billy and Mandy with zombie brownies. Mm. Zombie brownies do sound good. Although I prefer the brains song by a volatile. So. Brains, Shoot brains. Them zombies by shooting them in the head. Well, that's a different song. But I'm just gonna say the best zombie song out there, um, and this is somewhat relevant to me, is called "If I Were a Zombie" by Stephanie Mabry. If you haven't heard it, go listen to it. I highly recommend it. It's actually my husband and I's wedding song. I, I was thinking "Zombie" be by the Cranberries, but yeah, that works too. <laughs> For me, I was thinking of any song that was made by Rob Zombie. Ah, uh, 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 like specifically Dracula. Yeah, eh, that is actually a good song. Well, guys, welcome to the wrap around end segment of this episode. Um, let's start off simple, I guess. Uh. What is your favorite type of zombie media? We'll start simple. Hmm, that is easy. Uh, video games for me. Okay, what's your favorite zombie video game then? The Last of Us. Okay. Alright. Fair. Hmm. For me, it's honestly a tie between movies and video games. And what would be your favorite video game or movie that's zombie related? Movie wise, that's a tough one because there's a lot since 1964. Yeah. But if I had to pick my all time favorite, it has to be the the movie that redefined the zombie mythos, Night of the Living Dead. Oh, that's a fantastic one. That's a classic that's a choice. That is a classic. That was a good one. It made zombies instead of voodoo slaves cannibals. I guess Feral. Uh, I am a zombie movie buff myself. Um, I watch just about any and every zombie movie out there. I've seen uh, my favorite genre of movies are, are uh, B rated horror movies. And there good choice. is a ton of good zombie movies in that uh, particular category. Oh yeah, those can be a lot of fun. If you had to pick uh, one off the top of your head. Return of the Living Dead movies? Oh my god, they're so corny, but I love them. Yeah, there's those. Um, and then there's there's a particular uh, a particular subset in that particular genre, which is basically it's Nazi zombies. And we're talking like Dead Snow... Um, you know, you've got Bunker of the Dead. Uh, those are those are probably a couple of my favorites. There's yeah. also a few. Oh. There's also a few really like amazingly bad zombie shark movies as well. Oh, absolutely! And those are oh man, right up my alley. I've seen them. <laughs> zombie uh, yeah, animals. You you just can't go wrong with it. There's a whole mo there's a movie called Zombies, which is all about uh, a zoo that gets the zoo animals get infected. It has been a long time since I've seen that one. I need to rewatch that. Amazon Prime recommendation multiple times. Absolutely watch it. 
<laughs> See, I I watched it, but there's only one problem I had with it, and it, it will go into spoiler territory, so I won't say anything. But how old's the movie? Uh, not that old, honestly. Uh, I not that old. I, but it's, it's, it should it's, be bad. Uh, about ten years or so. Oh, screw it! Spoil the hell out of yeah, it. Because okay. I, it's ten years old. When I did um. So every year I do a, a, a zombie-themed dinner party for Halloween, and the first year I did it, in fact, I did uh, I had zombie movies playing in the background, and that was one of them, and that had to be back in, like, uh, I don't know, like 2015? Oh, it came out in 2016. Yeah. Okay, and, so. And apparently there's a sequel. Oh, nice. It came out in 2018. Huh. Zombies 2. So I guess we'll have to look that up. I'll have to watch that in the sequel. And, and I also kind of like the zombie movies that t- that try, quote unquote, to redefine the zombie mythos. I'm one of those few people. I would kind of like warm bodies. I, I actually liked warm bodies. It yeah. was actually a not bad movie. Actually. Yeah, I I know people rag on it. Folks as zombie movies, but it needed it. Yeah, I, I know people rag on it, but it was funny because I actually went and saw that for my birthday one year at uh, Tempe Marketplace, and I actually thoroughly enjoyed it with how cheesy and funny it was. I remember taking a date to go see it. College. But, okay, was it a good date? It was. She she later left me for someone else, but, you know, I can't fault her there. She seems to be happy to be married with kids. We're still connected. Okay, but as long as you had the good memory. Oh, yeah. So, okay. As far as favorite zombie media for me personally, I I gotta go with Feral on this one. I enjoy some good zombie movies. The cheesier and BC tier related movie they are, the better. If, if we're talking terrible camera equipment, terrible lighting, you know, terrible photography, terrible music... The cheesier and cornier, the better. And costume work. Oh, and, and the worse the costume, the better. Oh, yeah. See? So, okay, here's this. What's the funniest or worst zombie movie that you've seen? Ooh. Oh. Oh, hang on. Hmm. I already have mine because I the found worst. it completely by random on Netflix. Do worst. animated ones count? As long as it has zombie in it, it's fine. Okay. Hmm. Like, for me, it's Gang of the Dead. Ooh, that's a niche one. That, that one is niche. Gang of the Dead. I don't think I've heard of that one. I don't think I've heard of that one either. I, I literally found it randomly on Netflix when one night when I couldn't sleep. Okay, give us a synopsis. Literally, a meteorite hits up a bunch of homeless people in L.A. and essentially turns them into zombies, obviously. And these two gangs that were that were about to attack and attack each other or kill each other, whatever gangs do, zombies attack them. That's literally the synopsis. Wow. I would have to say, as much as people like the first one, I really don't like the second one a whole lot, but Zombieland 2. Really? I actually love that movie. I like the first one a lot. Like, the first one's really good. The second one, I I like halfway through, and then the ending kind of falls flat for me. What about you, Dusty? Eh, this was going to be kind of a no-brainer, but I think it was Paul the W.S. Anderson's... It was either his fifth or his sixth Resident Evil movie. Oh, man. I Do you know how many Resident Evil movies I sat through in theaters because of a certain person in this call? <laughs> look. Look, Paul W.S. Anderson, as a director anyways, his films range from Ant to <clears throat> And, yeah, it was like the last one he did. It was just, it wasn't even entertainingly bad for me. 
for me, the only one that I got enjoyment out of final chapter was literally the water waterfall of fire. And that's it. I think that's the one, yeah, final chapter. See, I don't even remember its name. It was just that forgettable. Fair enough. Farrell, what about you? To say, because some of them are actually pretty damn entertainingly bad. Yeah, out of all the Resident Evil movies, I'd like the second one. What would be your favorite? Uh, well, what was the question again, Renji? The worst zombie movie that you've seen. And it can be under that category. It was so bad, it's good. Okay, then yeah, Farrell, what's your answer? Poultry Geist. Oh, yeah, because that's technically a zombie film. Mm -hmm. It's zombie chickens. Oh, yeah, I forgot all about Poultry Geist. It's so goofy as oh fuck. I don't think I've ever seen that one. Oh, okay. You would love it. It is right up your alley with, like, just weird zombie shit. It's this, uh, like, this fast food place, and it's built on an Indian burial ground. Or, sorry, I should say Native American burial ground. And, so, you know, a KFC. Um, and, uh, this chicken becomes, uh, it becomes possessed by these zombie chickens. And it's, it's called Poultry Guys, Night of the Chicken Dead. It's fantastic. And if you haven't seen it, you should go and watch it. It is so bad, but it is so, like, brain-numbingly stupid bad, and I, I, I have a love-hate relationship with it because it's one of the few films that me and Dad actually stayed up to watch on Sci-Fi Channel. <laughs> See, the, the way you describe that makes it sound like it's the sequel to Birdemic. Uh, that one I haven't seen. Okay, but Bird De Okay, but look, Birdemic technically is also a zombie film because of the way everything is set up. And I will say this: Birdemic is a very, very slow, very, very slow build. And I mean, that's kind of the biggest issue with the film. But when it's but full on B mode, it's entertaining. But when but after that, it drags. But it drags. But the drag is worth it just for the payoff. How stupid it is at the end. It it it, it it's it's like holding. It's like imagine you're in line for something, and you and it's like an hour and a half wait in line. But when you get to the end of the line, you finally get the bite of that like burger. You're just like, this is worth it. I feel complete. Honestly, you just need to watch the JonTron video of... Oh, yeah. Uh, they obviously do that. You've got it. Go, go watch the John. Well, don't, you know, watch it after you're done watching this episode of Crashbox, but go after this Crashbox, go watch the JonTron video. So, all right. And, and now, so bad, it's bad zombie movies. Like, it's just straight bad. Oh, I thought that's what we were talking about. No, so bad that essentially the worst ones that you've seen. Mm. Oh, man. I don't know if I have one. I already have one. Yeah, that, that was actually my answer to, to, to that. So bad it wasn't even been enjoyable. Well, then we'll just keep oh. yours as the same answer. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just keep it. Yeah. My, an my answer is Uba Ball's House of the Dead. Oh, I skipped that one in Thai. You're already good. Like, I mean, I saw his Alone in the Dark, and I just noped everything else he's ever done. I would agree and say that that one's also really bad too. It's just bad. It's it's bad. Considering he pretty much directed those films strictly for a tax break at the time time, which was a loophole in German law that was later fixed. Does not surprise me. He didn't actually try those. What would be your answer, Farrell? I don't know if I have one, really. Um, I, I, I pretty much, if it doesn't, if it's got zombies in it, it's, I'm probably going to watch it, but I don't think I've ever really seen a zombie movie that I didn't like. Okay. That's fair enough. 
What about a zombie video game? Like one that you've enjoyed, one that you thought was bad, or one that you thought could be eh, or like what? Yeah, just kind of, let's keep it easy, go favorite, least favorite. Okay. Uh, favorite, I would have to say, uh, currently, Dead Rising. Like, any of the Dead Rising games have been always my favorite to play. And they've always been, like, really good. I would say least favorite is, I hate to be honest, Resident yeah, Evil 4 through 6. Ah, knew it. Resident Evil 4 through 6. 4 through 6. I mean, 6 was bad. Yeah. Village, I like. Village, I actually do enjoy. And uh, even um, Resin the oh. Resident Evil before that was, not 6, but the... um. Where they started the new trilogy was good. Seven. Seven, thank you. So seven and village were good. So uh I mean village barely even counts as a zombie movie zombie game game at that point actually. Uh -uh. Yeah, it's just more or less you trying to escape a crazy house. I still count it because of the undertones and stuff within the mutations it's, and shit. It's, it's mostly just the monsters and stuff now at that point. Uh -huh. Like it starts with werewolves. Also, at the time of this recording, I got done doing a state of play earlier today. And they announced oh that my God, that's what, mm. we will talk about state of play another time in another recording. Okay. But oh. I will say this, Village in VR 2 looks good. Oh, I'm sure that that's going to, to look really good. So. I decided uh, for the RE4 remake too. Exactly. Uh, what about you guys? What's what's your favorite zombie and least so, favorite zombie video games? So I already shared that my favorite is the is the Last of Us, namely because it did something really smart with taking a real world a real real world fungus that does zombify ants and mm. puts it in humans. That is was very creative, very well done. And it was actually pretty scary at times. There was a lot of high tense moments for me during that game, more than that other that there's. And I played all the Resident Evil games. My least favorite is Resident Evil Six. It does technically count Killing Floor Two. Yeah, Killing Floor Two is just dull. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Least and favorite. Um, well, here, while you're thinking... up, oh, go ahead. As much I was so excited to play and eventually got remade, my least favorite is honestly Stubbs the Zombie. The remake? Yeah. Mm. Is my least favorite, mainly just because it's so quiet. There's little, granted, most of the dialogue is grunting, but the fact that there's literally no soundtrack, the gameplay is super repetitive, and it's extremely linear. But would you say that your favorite ironic would be the original? No, like... I was super excited because I was never able to play it, and I've always wanted to because like, mm. I, I like zombie video games. Oh, okay. Top favorite? Dead Rising 4, Frank's Big Package. That's a good choice. And then, Farrell, what about you? So, um, I don't actually play a lot of, uh, like, zombie video games. Um, I played the original Resident Evil when it first came out, um, when I was actually pregnant with my oldest, so 20, over 20 years ago. Uh, <laughs> um, other than that, um, there's one that I found that I really enjoyed. It's called Zombie Vikings. Uh, that one's a fun one. Hmm. Uh, and you go around. You're you're uh, a Viking that has been reanimated as a zombie, 
Um, and you have different, you can pick different characters. There's even zombie Loki in it <laughs> and, uh, and zombie Odin. Uh, it's super cute. It's super fun. Other than that, I don't really play a lot of games in that particular vein. So you wouldn't even have like a worst one? No. Fair enough. So we've covered movies. We've covered video games. And there's really not a whole lot in terms of like, zo I mean, we kind of already covered it, but zombie music, but we already covered that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah, so zombies is not like a, zombies is usually like a, a metaphorical thing when it comes to music. Right. So then let me ask this. What would you say? For those who don't know anything about zombies or zombie culture, uh, with all the different conventions involving zombies and all the different books and literature involving zombies and media involving zombies, what would be a good entry point for people to understand zombies? So I'm going to go with an easy answer, but it's also a popular one, and it's uh, actually a very good answer. The Walking Dead comic. Okay. That one, it captures what the feeling would be surviving the apocalypse and surviving something like that with, with zombies, and it actually does go into explaining what happened and how it happened. So... And yeah, the show is also an option, but the comic is just so well done. The comic's definitely worth reading. Fair enough. Any additional answers from Farrell or Renji? Uh, for me, I would have to say any zombie title that's written by Max Brooks. Like, World War Z and the zombie survival guide that he wrote. Because he actually... I don't know, because World War Z has many different stories within the book itself. Mm -hmm. it's rather than one straight narrative, like most books are, the narrative is that Max Brooks plays a interviewer interviewing people who have survived the apocalypse and different stages of the apocalypse. So I would say, if anything, World War Z would be my official title. And if you want to get reading more, the hit zombie survival guide. Easy. Fair enough. Feral? Uh, I not having read a lot of zombie uh not having consumed uh any like zombie books or comics or anything like that um i would start with um i, I don't really know what i would start with um the walking dead series was was pretty good i i'll admit that i i dropped off watching it um after a while but i would honestly i would go back to uh romero's zombies i loved his zombie movies so that's where i would start Start off. The godfather of zombies. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. That's true. So. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have the modern zombie. Oh, uh, we wouldn't have the concept of the zombie. Yeah. So, one says Walking Dead books, one says go back to some old school movies and era, and one says check out even, you know, just some good literature or just some good supplemental material. Me, personally, the way I got into zombies, have an old school kind of like, you know, 80s retro night with your friends. Try and just order a pizza, get on Netflix or Hulu, you know, find a cheesy movie, find one that looks like it'll be fun and goofy, but look for also a serious zombie movie. Look for even a zombie documentary about like, what would happen if these types of things did occur. You know, even historically, because then you'd be thoroughly surprised at 
you know, when and where and how easily zombie culture fits in international history and American history. Which, as a bonus question, and we have to tie this all into the episode. As you guys know, Back for Blood is a game. It's a video game. And it's a great video game. It's a lot of fun. And we actually... It's crap by itself. Crap by yourself. What? It's great with friends, but when it's just you playing it with, with NPCs, it's awful. Fair enough. But... The thing is, when you're having a blast killing zombies, and having a good time slaying while you're at it, the inspiration for Back for Blood came obviously from the game before it, Left for Dead. And it wouldn't be fair if we didn't at least briefly bring up Left for Dead, something of a cultural milestone for zombies. So with that in mind, what are some of your best memories with Left for Dead, or Left for Dead 2? That's oh, uh, actually. I, I actually missed out on the Left 4 Dead craze. Really? I did. Um, I was. I think when Left 4 Dead 2 came out, I was in college. I didn't really have a lot of time for gaming. Meaning, I remember my roommate really like like him playing with a group of people on his PC. That's and that was it. And yeah, it's one I've just been kind of needing to get back to actually find and play. Dude, we need to have a Left 4 Dead night. Surprisingly, my favorite Left 4 Dead memories were some of the YouTube spoofs that came from it. And all the parodies. Mm. Like my absolute favorite is Left 4 Speed 2. <laughs> I actually loved watching Markiplier play it, actually. That that does come up. Uh, In... and, that, and when you brought it up, uh, John, I actually own an episode of the History Channel who the entire episode talks about zombies. Like, they have a special dedicated to nothing but zombies. You know what? That is fair enough. And also, I'm going to Google something on the side while you're uh, talking about that stuff. But what about you, Farrell? What about, uh, do you have any Left 4 Dead memories or Left 4 Dead 2 memories? No, I don't actually play those ones. Uh, I can't play first-person shooters, so. Fair enough. I grew up in the oh. middle of that chaos. It was so much fun. I mean, I love first-person sh shooters, but... My wife, a retired pro gamer, sees me play them, and she laughs at how bad I am at all. Oh, I, I'm bad too, but I still play. Yeah. Like I love fighting games; I'm terrible at them, but I still love. Them. Hey, you want to hear the irony about uh, Left for Speed? What? Guess the animator that made them. Who? A certain O-N-E-N-G. Sounds about right. Yeah, that was him, the guy that I've tried to get you in Oni plays. Same guy. So, it's funny that you mentioned that. That's funny. Now, my personal favorite memories with Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 is just the sheer amount of chaos and calamity that comes with trying to coordinate with your friends to make it from one end level to the other and it's all of the and all of the glitchy hijinks that come along with it so you guys know i'm talking about if you've played the game for years but like it the, the fun comes from surviving horde after horde of syntax error level zombies while trying to just make it to the end and <sighs> Honestly, if you want a good laugh, check out any of the Let's Plays that are up on YouTube with a bunch of different content creators. It's a good uh, laugh. Uh, Markiplier. Markiplier actually has a really fun Let's Play series for, for Left 4 Dead. Check it out. Now, 
we briefly talked about Left 4 Dead. But, let me ask you guys more a very quick personal question. Okay. Right. Back for Blood. We all own it, correct? No. Yes. Uh, Xbox Game Pass. You don't own it, Feral? If I get into some extra cash soon and help you get a copy, would you be interested in playing it, all four of us? Is it a first-person game? It is. Sadly, yes. Absolutely not. Fair enough. Sorry, we'll have to get another the player for that one. Yeah, unfortunately, they, they make me nauseous. Mm. So fair. I just don't play them. <laughs> it, it is on the Xbox Game Pass as well. Fair enough. I have a PlayStation. <laughs> Hail PlayStation. Hail PlayStation. Uh, PlayStation as well. Um, gaming is gaming for me. So. <laughs> gaming is gaming! <laughs> yeah, I'm not picky. Speaking of not being picky, and it is the end of the episode, and it wouldn't be a product, uh, proper product plug without talking about the company that made this whole episode you know, possible. Charlie's Cheesesteaks. Mm. Now, I'll make this very shameless and as quick as possible. Thank you for the hat. Thank you for the game codes. Thank you for the swag. Thank you for the care package. Thank you for all the fun content. Without you, this wouldn't have been possible. With that in mind, little bonus side question. What's everybody's favorite uh, type of cheesesteak to get? We're talking at Charlie's or just in general? Charlie's preferably, but if not, in general. Mm. Well, specifically from Charlie's, they have this, um, they have the bacon three cheese. Uh, cheese steak. Sandwich. Love that mm. one. That one's but a good one. For me personally, it is hard to turn down a classic made cheesesteak with the grilled peppers and mushrooms and onions with the with like the provolone cheese and the thin cut beef beef all fried up together that is an amazing sandwich just i don't think i've ever the only time i've had a bad cheesesteak was one that was improperly cooked fair enough feral I am a sucker for tradition when it comes to cheesecake, so I go with the uh, with the traditional cheesecake uh, cheesesteak, uh, <laughs> except no onions because I'm allergic. <laughs> I mean that's fair. That's fair. Can't go wrong with a traditional. Mm -hmm. Mr. Renji, I will also still have to go with cheesecake. Just a but classic traditional. It has to be in the names of a certain episode from Fresh Prince of Bel Air. If you can't see through the bag, it's not a Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> okay, fair. Yeah, I mean, I think we're all kind of in agreement. You can't quite beat the classic. I would have to agree. You can't quite beat the classic. I I'm a fan of the old school. That uh, Charlie's has, it's just meat, cheese whiz, peppers and onions, you're good to go. And just melty cheese. So, now, that aside, we gotta talk, get back to talking about zombies. Of course. Alright. Zombies. We love the video games, we love the movies, we love the media, we love the books. And, well, we know that zombies are a very interesting what-if scenario if they were to ever happen. But, a lot of people don't talk about their prep plan with zombies. So let me ask you this. Based on your knowledge of zombies, all three of you, What's your actual go-to plan if a uh, zombie invasion actually does break out of any kind? And, Feral, we're going to start with you. Okay, so, funny story. I was actually talking about this with my 12-year-old when she found out that I was going to be talking about zombies tonight. Um, so, uh, there is this... Uh, 
it's it's a vehicle and it's uh basically it's this huge tree grinder and uh, the front of it looks like it's got a giant saw blade on the front of it um on like an arm so my plan is to find one of those and mow down as many zombies as i can and then i'm gonna hole up somewhere I'm going to gather my people. I'm specifically going to find people that can uh, grow food because apparently I can't. Um, and then I'm going to go raid a um, like a gym or a sporting goods store for all of their treadmills. And I'm going to get a couple of generators. And I'm going to figure out how to hook those treadmills up to the generators and put them all around where I'm staying. So that as the zombies try to uh, get in, they just power the gener they uh, they uh, power the generators with the treadmills, and then just wait it out. Fair enough. Good plan. Uh, Dusty. So, uh, the first thing to consider is a good place to hide. To hide out, so preferably places that would be. <clears throat> be a minimal of bugs and water for a few reasons. Uh, just about like a standard river or, or creek is probably best, but the less bugs, the better, because a because it, it, it is a virus that can transfer that way. Yes. Um, I would not go with guns right away, because guns, one, are noisy, two, very, very limiting on how much you, you can do based on ammo. So I would actually rely on farm equipment and personal items like that, such as shovels and axes to go for the head. And I would actually raid a Costco for things like canned goods, clothing, food. If I need to actually block, block people, block out zombies out of one, it's very it's it's very do it's very doable because it is a warehouse and you can lock up those no problem. Bonus question: Why Costco and not a Winco or a Sam's Club? Uh, Sam's Club and Winco have glass doors on the front. Costco doesn't. Oh yeah. Okay, smart move. And then. I know he's been brainstorming this for years. Spotlight's finally on him. Renji, how would you survive a zombie apocalypse? Oh, I already know I'm not gonna survive. <laughs> ah, shit! What an anticlimactic answer! <laughs> You've been prepping the, the. You've had your whole life to actually. Like, this is literally. YOUR TIME IN THE SPOTLIGHT! <laughs> I know, but hear me out. <laughs> Listening. My answer is actually kind of a noble one. And heavy metal. At the same time. Listening. For me, I want to serve as the distraction. I want to go to... I want to say... A record store or any place that sells giant subwoofers <laughs> connect it to my vehicle, whichever it may be at the time. And I'm going to turn on the heaviest, loudest song I could think of on full volume and let the zombies follow me. To where I get the zombies away from fellow survivors. And when my car runs out, I have a block of C4 in the, in the fuel tank. And an extra tank of gas. And light it up. So you want to you wanna do the hero heroic sacrifice? Yep. Fair. I guess if I had to give my answer as to what I would do, 
I've put in a couple plots and contingency plans into it. But I think ultimately it always wraps back to one. I would be the guy who has connections with every, like, faction, every group, every, like, you know, militia. It, like, I, I'm the guy that's like, you know, hey, I know that this group has an extra tank of gas and an extra week's supply worth of food. We should go, you know, talk to them and trade favors in exchange. And then I'd be like, hey, I know this other group. They have full working cars and fully loaded weapons. If we trade some favors over here and trade some of this, maybe they'll help us get out of this bind. You know, I'm, I'm going to be like the sneaky guy that like everybody knows that like... It is the one guy that survives up until almost the very end. And then they get tired of dealing with me and the whole red tape. So instead of dying from the zombies, I just get like cooed from like all the different groups at once. And they take me out. You know. So I'm like, I'm like the hey man. Here you need some fireworks. Here you need some buzz saws and blades that, you know, do some decapitation, you know what I mean? I know a guy, you know, the guy who protects his ass, but also is like, hey man, listen, you got the goods, I got the swag. <laughs> I'd, I'd be that sneaky bastard. <laughs> or at least I'd see myself that way. So... We know how we'd survive the zombie apocalypse. We know what our plans are. But let's really test our knowledge. How many different types of zombies are actually out there? And let's, re let's really break down like what can kill us and what can't. And this is where I'm actually just going to let you guys take over. I want you guys to go completely fully nerd out. I want you to talk about your favorite type of zombies, what they do, how they interact, how they infect. I want you guys to go full ham, but I want Feral to start. Okay, so I uh, am a, I'm actually a bigger fan of the, uh, the classic zombie, the, the slow, uh, the slow moving ones. Um, and I mean, really, honestly, I think at some point it's going to come down to, um, you know, the the whole basis of the zombies' food and reproduction is that, I mean, where their food and that's how they reproduce. Eventually, they're just going to die out. So I think I think honestly, if it's something like this were to happen, it would come down to just having to wait things out, um, you know, depending on I mean, and if it's a virus, well, then there's there's going to be someone who's going to come up with a cure eventually, um, just because you're going to have people who are working on it. Um, you know, you're, it doesn't matter what's going to happen. You're going to have, you're going to have scientists who are going to be like, you know, what the heck, uh, we need to fix this. Um, and I know one of you had mentioned earlier, the, the zombie ants. Um, I would imagine that something like that would give us at least some way to, you know, kind of give us a starting point as far as, as I guess a quote unquote cure would be. Um, and then the other thing is, I mean, I would think that eventually you could get vaccinated if you come up, if you come up with a cure, I'm sure they're going to be able to come up with some sort of vaccine. Um, so that's what I think, but that's kind of where my mind goes when I think of it. Fair enough. Boys?
So it does come down to how it started. Was it, let's say, fantasy setting the, a curse? Kind of easy. Break, break the curse. No more zombies. Okay, so that's pretty much an AD and D campaign right there. The if it's a virus, yeah, it would it, it, it would be mostly a waiting game, unless the people working on it also got infected. Then that just leads to more problems, and that's just a that's a toss toss up deciding how the world will end or not. The fungus, there is a chance for actual immunity with that, and that would actually also go into recent research and helping helping to cure it and find out what if it would actually work or not. And that would require things like humans that would require people actually giving themselves up for autopsy to figure out why they were immune to it. And then there's the third, and then there's the last version, which people don't talk about, which is probably the least likely which is an alien. Example, the flood from Halo. There actually is one more type that you forgot about. I mean, the curse, the virus, the fungus, the, the alien. Yeah, there's one more I'm sure there's missing. There's a lot. But I'm just, I'm keeping it in it, it general. Uh, the, the, the only other one that I could think of is the no room left in hell zombies. Yeah. There's those ones as well, but that one is kind of a little more vague. So for a lot of it, it is mostly just waiting things out, surviving until answers actually come. That's all. That's where it all comes down to. It's always going to be that game of survival. Whether it's fun, whether it's high risk, whether it's deep storytelling, whether it's So no, no matter what, it's going to always, the zombies, at least the phenomenon of zombies always comes down to the question of timing and waiting and just trying to survive until good news comes. Fair. For me, it's, for me, it's the type of zombie we're dealing with. Like, if it's... And when I mean type, like, it's walking speed. The If it's the standard walking zombies, those are the ones people underestimate the most, and the reason why it spreads is because out of sheer stupidity and fear. Um, the one I feel, if it did happen... Humanity would still be 100% utterly screwed. The zombies from World War Z, the movie. Mm. Ones that run and pile on top of each other just to get you. They fly through the air just to bite. These zombies will get you. And they are hyper active compared to, say, the standard shambling zombie that was originally created. If we have the running zombies, like, say, World War Z and 28 Days Later, we're screwed. Because not everyone can run like an Olympic athlete. Mm -hmm. So for me, it just be depending on the type of zombie. And if we're dealing with Last of Us zombies, I am still going to have to say survival, the longer it goes, the worse it'll get because they do evolve and get thicker skin. Mm -hmm. They do get extra thick. So you, have, you would have to kill those zombies extremely quickly. Mm-hmm. Too bad the second game didn't do anything to expand on that. The well, less said there, the better. Yeah, but Rat King, that's all I have to say. Yeah. And then, yeah. like, um, if you guys have seen, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen Army of the Dead with... Um, 
You have? Yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah. Okay, so those zombies end up um, evolving to the point where they can reproduce with humans. So then they're they're making they don't have an unlimited they don't have a, a finite supply of uh, ways to make new zombies. So I think that's kind of uh, to build on the whole World War Z zombies. You're that you're looking at that too, because those zombies ran. Yeah, yeah, just running zombies in general are, for me are just nightmares. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Granted, the movie was terrible; was not as good as people wanted it to be. I still think it, it's one of the best zombie movies ever made. I had fun watching it. I mean, the the people made dumb choices, but still a fun watch. You can recognize the goofiness and the dumbness, but it's still fun. Yeah. I mean, it's a Zack Snyder film. There, there, there has to be some fun in it somewhere, right? Yeah. Still, the zombie tiger stole the show. Mm. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That was, a, that was a... Yes, and the way it killed was someone was very satisfying. You, you know this... You wanted this guy dead, but the way it killed, it's like, mm, ultra satisfying. Yeah. So then... My other question for you guys would be, what's a zombie topic that you guys want to bring up? What's a zombie question you have for me? Uh, this is you would like to see in zombie media more that you haven't seen all that often. That's a really good question. I would like to see a zombie movie explaining the mental choice to become a zombie like what what's the mental evolution process of a human converting to a zombie not just by choice or like by force but just in general like what's you see you see physically the evolution of a human to zombie or a creature to zombie or an animal to zombie but mentally, what are the emotional thought process from point A to point B? I'd like to see more of that. The only media that, that I can see that did that was Walking Dead. Yeah, Walking, Walking Dead, Dead, Dead actually did it. Yeah, but I'd like well, to see I more of it. Eye uh, Zombie? Oh, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the, the zombie as well. Yeah. Eye Zombie that was one, a good one. That one does that one... go through part of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially when uh, they're trying to go through the cure and uh, uh, infect themselves on purpose. Mm -hmm. I guess I would want to see more of that. See, honestly, the one media that I saw that had zombies in it that I wanted more of was the San Clarita Diet. Oh, oh that yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That one was good. Sadly, that one was canceled, so... <laughs> I know, it was so good, though. Canned faster than an animated project at Netflix, hey -o. Yeah. I mean, actually, its cancellation wasn't as fast as others on Netflix, we'll say that much. Because it got, like, I believe, two seasons. Yeah, yeah, it got two seasons, so it actually lasted longer than other Netflix shows. Well, Fair. That's for a good reason. Fair. All right, what's another question or a topic you guys want to bring up? Hmm. Your favorite zombie cliche. The bad guy that's a complete douchebag at the end getting turned or eaten by a zombie. Hmm. So okay. satisfying. Hmm. Especially the guy in our... An army. Mm. Zombie type. <laughs> so, I actually do have a show I can recommend to people as well who want to check out zombie stuff. Because mm. it legitimately was amazing. And it's on Netflix. The Korean show All of Us Are Dead. I have not heard of that See, one. I've been wanting to watch that. This is a legitimately great zombie show. Yeah, that one's on my it list. If I had to pick, if like say if like it's a foreign zombie movie, there's only one movie that comes to mind, and that's the Train to Busan. The also 
that's also a South Korean film. And yeah, the Koreans actually do probably the best zombie media right now. And yeah, Train to Busan, I, throughout the entire movie, my heart was thumping a thousand miles an hour because I, mm -hmm. it's running zombies inside of a train. Yeah, that, that, that by itself is pretty freaky. What would be your uh, cliches, though? Uh, the answer is that. That is a good no. cliche because it's always satisfying to see. I will say my favorite cliche is the different, the different groups of survivors because you always have like the one group of survivors that you're super rooting for, and you're like. And then if any of them die, you get really upset, you cry. Um, and then you have, like, the one group that are just awful, awful people. And that you're just like, they should be removed. And <laughs> you have the weird group, you know. Um, you have the weird the one group. you don't entirely trust, but you know that might be good or bad. Yeah, they're like, you're like, okay, you're gonna, like... They're just kind of their group. Yeah, and, and it's just, it's a group of weirdos who somehow, like, survived. Kind of like, it went, like, think Shaun of the Dead, that group. Yeah. Dude, that was the other thing I was gonna bring up. That was, like, one of my other favorite movies. Shaun of the Dead, absolutely. Because not Me? only was it a parody of zombie movies, it became its own zombie movie. Yeah. Let's see. My favorite cliche is actually them turning turning what's not a normal weapon into a weapon against zombies. Yes, the weapon crafting. Weapon crafting, like how in yeah, how in Dead Rising, that's like half. That's like a that's half the fun of, of the entire your game is creating weapons, or how in High School of the Dead in that anime. Made the dorky kid makes turns turns a uh, staple gun into an actual built an actual like like scope and shoulder rest to make it like feel like an actual gun so we can actually use it to kill zombies. Or if you really want a good semi-automatic nail gun, yeah, yeah, I mean that's cool. That's cool. Look, listen, th there's definitely plenty of weird weapon crafting, and I still think one of the best creative uses of taking out zombies is still typing of the dead where you're literally just using a typewriter using a typewriter to take out zombies it's great for me, for me my favorite cliche is actually the final showdown of the horde mm. ah that's always good too the big climatic I mean, battle i mean even the serenity movie did that too Mm. That's that's the some final good cliches. Is by far one of my more favorite cliches of like action movies, but just zombie movies make it better. Mm -hmm. They really do. Well, we talked about favorite cliches. Uh, what were the other questions and thoughts and stuff you guys had? Come on, bring bring it all in. Mm. Really unpack your mind on zombies. Talk to me. A whole lot else to talk about, really. <laughs> That's kind of what I was thinking. Um... Mm. Oh, you kind of already another... covered all the really good topics. The weapon of choice for the apocalypse for you guys. Flamethrower. Flamethrower. Really? An axe? Grenades. An axe. An axe <laughs> has. An axe does not require ammo. It requires less strength than a hammer. And I can get enough distance between me and the zombie to actually get a good kill kill by chopping off his head. Yeah. Honestly, for me, it would be a crowbar. I it's still... a weapon and a utility item. It's true. When it comes to zombie apocalypse, the smartest thing is actually to, to go with a, a melee weapon. I would still say flamethrower. Because eventually you will run out of ammo for your guts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
or fuel for from a flamethrower. That does not last. I still say favorites flamethrower, but if I have to be practical about it, honestly, anything involving like kitchenware. Because, imagine it for a moment, you're not only throwing kitchen knives and blades and saws and accessories and stuff at zombies, but most kitchenware, even just a simple, like, kitchen cylinder block, is enough to knock their heads off or enough to crush their skulls in. You'd be surprised how useful things in your kitchen are good at killing zombies. And if you're, you know, into that sort of thing, a balanced meal. I, I feel like I feel like a lot of melee weapons would be too up close. That's how I feel. Yeah, that's why I still say flamethrower. Like uh, a large group, not necessarily a huge horde, but when you're when you're dealing with a, a large group that you're fighting off, that's when uh, that's when I feel like the melee weapons have their their biggest disadvantage. Plus, you're yeah, still reaching your arm out, which they could bite your arm. When a, with a, a large group, definitely get the gun first. Definitely bring out the guns at that point. But if you can bottleneck them to the point where they can't grab you, then go for your melee weapons. Exactly. Yeah, so, I can so see that. So, options for both, but yeah. Well... Guys, I think, unless there's anything else you all want to bring up. I can think of anything else. Yeah. Yeah, we pretty much covered a lot of them. All then, guys, this was a lot of fun talking about zombies and zombie culture and zombie knowledge and zombie things. But before we go, What is some zombie knowledge that you'd like to pass on to people? You know, in case we wind up watching this episode of Crash Box 50, 60 years in the future, and, you know, it's all dystopian, and, you know, it's zombie apocalypse actually happens. For me, cut your hair. Odd advice, but okay, I'll take it. Uh, if, you cut, if you have shorter hair, not much for them to grab on. Mm-hmm. Okay, Farrell? I would say know your community. Make sure that the people that you uh, hole up with, you have somebody who can cook, somebody who can hunt, somebody who can grow food, somebody who can sew, somebody who can... And make sure that you have somebody who can provide uh, uh, entertainment because you're not going to just all be sitting around fighting off zombies 24 7 you're gonna need to eat you're gonna need to have some downtime and uh i think a lot of the people discount us the the uh need for entertainment even during uh a dystopian uh, zombie apocalypse there dusty aim for the head <laughs> classic when in doubt double tap also good advice. Honestly, my advice to all you people out there, do what you can to think uh, twice as fast as possible on your toes. You never know when you're going to need to become a fast learner and a fast thinker and get out of a hairy situation that quick. It could be instantaneous even while you're asleep. So, always be on your toes. And, uh... Guys, with that in mind, I want to thank a bunch of people. I want to thank Dusty the Punk, who was able to join us for some zombie-related shenanigans. You can find him over on, well... 
Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Dusty the Punk. But he's also on Twitter. And he's also on a few other socials. In fact, where can they find you? Uh, outside of the ones you mentioned, I'm also on... Uh, I'm also on... On Instagram at Dust the Punk. And I am on TikTok at Dust the Punk 90. And he also produces music at South Paul Studios. You should check him out. Makes great commissions. Meanwhile, Miss Farrell, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitch, TikTok, and Instagram, all under Farrell Ambassador. Very nice. And what kind of content do you make, by the way? We know about what kind of content Dusty makes, but what about you? Uh, on Twitch, I usually play um i don't know i play uh whatever games i'm playing i've played uh, a lot of god of war um and right now i'm currently playing through curse of the dead gods um instagram is a testament to my own vanity uh and on tiktok it's mostly videos of my new pit bull named Petey. Aww. I like that. Oh, and by the way, if you want a good, uh, you know, mind-altering experience, Dusty the Punk has recently been playing uh, through the first ever Psychonauts on his Twitch at the time of this recording. Nice. Yep, I start, yep, started that today. I did have to cut the stream short for personal reasons, but I will get back to that. How are you liking it, by the way? It's a lot of fun. Good. And then... Renji? Yeah? Where can they find you? Literally just YouTube under RenjiMan717 and I make video game music videos. Do you have one coming up? I have one in the pipe. Yes. Any particular sneak peek you can give us? Not really. <sighs> I can tell you the name of the song that's about it. Oh, okay. Tell us that. Uh, Sermon of Swords by Power Wolf. Ooh, it's a good song choice. And finally, guys, if you ever want to find me, CrashMash01 on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Discord, Twitter again, and, well, many other places so guys gals people they's thems people of all identities thank you so much for hanging out talking zombies talking cheesesteaks and uh i don't know normally i end these on kind of a gag what, what's what's something funny about zombies we can talk about Read Marvel Zombies. Um, no, don't read that. Don't read that. <laughs> oh, come on. It's so fun. Don't, don't, don't read that. It's, it's crap. It's not crap, it's okay? Crap. It's crap. It's, it's, it was during Marvel's crap era. It's not good. Why is it crap? It's crap. Why is it crap? Why is it crap? Yeah, why is it crap? Because nothing interesting actually happens in it. That's why. Yes, but if it wasn't for Marvel Zombies, Robert Cookman wouldn't have gotten the idea for The Walking Dead. Yeah, he's yeah, he read that and went, watch me do better. Oh, no, Robert Kirkman was a part of the project. Still, he went off and did a better thing. Oof. I even have Robert Kirkman's signature in my Marvel Zombies graphic novel. Oof. That doesn't matter. He did something <laughs> that happened before him. <laughs> I will defend Marvel Zombies. <laughs> Keep trying. You won't convince me. I, I, I'm not trying to convince you. I'm saying I'll defend it to my last breath. You have a last breath? 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, great. Someone died on my show. What? Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. I passed out. Fair enough. Actually, you know what, too? Fair as a bonus gag. You're not normally on a lot of these things. So, Farrell, you get to have the last uh, joke. Uh... I will say, um, I guess, is um, if you are like me and uh, you like a lot of zombie movies and you have children, uh, your children may be asking to watch zombie movies with you. Uh, definitely start them out with uh, a movie called Paranorman. I don't really Ooh. have any zombie jokes, so I'm going to leave you with that. <laughs> that is a good movie. <laughs> All right, for a minute of recording. I love you all. Uh, thanks for tuning in to the episode. I got, I, I got a zombie joke. Okay, fine. Zombie joke, go. What did the zombie say watching the final Resident Evil movie? What? I don't know. They left moaning. I say we end on that note. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Bye. <laughs> Didn't say it was going to be a good one. <laughs>